What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the 2024 Subaru Crosstrek base model. Now, normally what I do in these videos is I go out on our lot and I try and find the most expensive vehicle to take a look at because it's gonna have the most bells and whistles and the most things to talk about. But I wanted to do the opposite for this video. So I went to our inventory and I found the cheapest Crosstrek that we had in stock. This is a 2024 Subaru Crosstrek base model. The only options on this thing are the standard package three, which is gonna give you a rear bumper cover, rear seat back protectors, all weather floor liners, cargo tray, LED map and dome lights, and a cargo net, which is about $771 worth of options. So the base model starts at about 26,000, plus the options, plus destination fees and things, brings this total to just over $27,000. In fact, there are only three vehicles on our lot cheaper than this, and they're all Impreza base models. So this is basically the cheapest vehicle that we have on our lot. But that doesn't mean that it doesn't have a lot of great options. Maybe you're in the market for a 2024 model, but your budget isn't super high, you want really low payments or something like that, but you still wanna get in something that has great safety features, a lot of nice standard technology as well, and is still capable and has storage space and passenger volume and things like that, this Crosstrek might be for you. So let's go ahead and start up front. So for 2024, the Crosstrek got a full redesign, sort of. It still looks very much like a Crosstrek, but you get some really nice aggressive elements that are new. You'll notice some increased cladding over the wheel wells here. The front end got a little bit of a facelift. The back end got a little bit of a facelift. Since this is the base model, it's gonna be missing some things, right? First and foremost, you'll notice you do not have fog lights here on the base model. They just give you a little plastic cap around this cladding area. That's just what you get. Pay a little more, you can get a fog lights, but you still get a really nice set of LED steering responsive headlights up top, which are plenty bright and are gonna help compensate for not having those fog lights. Again, you're going to have a lot of increased cladding around the front here, up around the wheel wells, working its way across the front grille, and it's pretty sporty too. You get some nice kind of ground effects down here, which is nice plastic cladding here in the center near your Subaru badge. Keep that in mind, there's going to be a lot of plastic in this since it's the base model. Not that there's not in the normal Crosstrek, but a little bit extra here on the base model. But outside of that, it's a pretty simplified front grille here. Now under the hood of the Crosstrek, you have two different engine options. This base model has the two liter boxer engine, which is going to give you 152 horsepower, 145 pound feet of torque, 34 miles per gallon highway, 27 miles per gallon city. And then up on some higher trim levels, including the Limited, the Sport, and the Wilderness, you can get an optional 2.5 liter boxer engine, which has 182 horsepower, 178 pound-feet of torque, 29 miles per gallon highway, 25 miles per gallon city. I would highly recommend if you can bump up to the 2.5 liter, do it. It's a much more enjoyable driving experience than the two liter, but again, most cross treks have had the two liter up until the last couple of years. So if it's out of your budget, don't worry, you'll be able to get by with the two liter. Now, of course, every cross track, even the base model, is going to come standard with Subaru's award winning EyeSight Driver Assist system. So these are these cameras up top here. They're going to give you a ton of great safety features. Now, you are going to be missing out on some things because, you know, this is a lower trim level, but you're still going to get some great standard features. So, like I mentioned a little bit earlier, this increased cladding here around the wheel wells is new for 2024. Just gives it a little bit of extra. Oomph. You get some vents here that are just passive vents. Really aggressive cladding here. I think it looks really nice and helps protect the paint a little bit better. The base model here is sitting on 17 inch dark gray alloy wheels. They're a five spoke wheel, but on some higher trim levels, you can get up to 18 inch wheels. Pretty basic mirrors here. These are black plastic mirror caps. They're manual folding. They are heated, but they don't have blind spot built in. They don't have turn signals. So pretty basic here. Again, base model. No keyless access here on the door panels either. That's something that you're missing and you get pretty much on every other trim level, but you're going to have to use your key fob here. Now, speaking of the key fob with the more basic models, you're going to get this type of Subaru key fob. It's basically just like a standard key with your lock, unlock, and trunk unlock buttons on it. But on the higher trim levels, you'll get the keyless key fob or the one that has the hidden key in it. That's the more traditional Subaru key fob. So you can use the key fob to unlock the doors and then lock them up like that, but no keyless access, like I said. And these door handles are kind of low quality. They're just like a plastic door handle, what you get on the base model. You'll notice also that you do not have a built-in roof rails, but you do have a roof rail mounting point. So if you want to add them, you can, but you don't get them standard here on the base model. You do get tinted rear glass, which is always nice. Now I mentioned with the EyeSight system that you don't get all of the more advanced features. You actually get some of them. You get advanced adaptive cruise control with lane centering on a $27,000 Crosstrek. That's pretty nice to have. 
So moving here to the back of the Crosstrek base model, like I mentioned, you still get a pretty aggressive looking back end. Some really sporty tail lights here. These are just normal non-LED tail lights, but have a really nice look to them. Very sharp and aggressive. A little bit of a body colored spoiler, some tinted rear glass with a wiper, Subaru badge in the center, some more Subaru badging, symmetrical all wheel drive badging, Crosstrek badging you know, every badge under the sun. Rear camera right here, that's standard. You do get this bumper applique that has mountains, trees, and waves on it. That's one of the options that we added in that standard options package. And then you get a pretty aggressive looking rear diffuser right here with some reflectors here and some more cladding with some kind of faux vents here. Now, you don't have a power lift gate, but you don't have a power lift gate on any Crosstrek, so no worries there. But you can use this button to open the tailgate and it will give you access to 20 cubic feet of cargo space. Now, if you want to pop these second row seats down, you can get up to 55 cubic feet of storage space, which is great. As I mentioned, you do have a cargo net optioned on. You've got some lights back here as well, room for a cargo shade. You've got your carpet mats back here, your all weather mats as well. You get some little detailed accents on the bumper here with a little mini cross track on there. You've got an all weather liner across the whole trunk and on the back of the seats, which again is something we optioned on. And then you do get a little bit of under floor storage and you do have a spare tire down here, which is great. That's pretty much everything back here in the trunk. You do have a little Subaru badge up underneath here, but no lights or anything like that on the base model. But again, plenty of cargo carrying capability on something that's this size. Well, let's go ahead and close her up and hop inside. All right, now hopping here into the cabin of the base model Crosstrek, things get pretty interesting. You go from having one large 11.6 inch infotainment display to two separate seven inch displays. It looks wild. It looks like futuristic, but at the same time, really old fashioned. Feels like we should have gotten this iteration before the large 11.6 inch display is like a bridge, but I'm very interested to see what you guys think about this very goofy split display here. But we'll come back to that. Let's talk about the materials inside of the cabin. Obviously this is the base model, so it's gonna have the lowest quality materials cabin wise. You really feel that on the steering wheel. It's not wrapped, it's not heated. It doesn't even have stitching on it. It's basically just a rubber steering wheel, like as low barrel as you can get. And that kind of continues through the whole cabin. So you got some textured fabric material here. Hard black plastic up top, kind of a faux carbon fiber look plastic here. A little bit of kind of a rubber armrest area here and then all stamped black plastic all the way down. And that theme of the door panels is gonna continue through the whole cabin. So kind of a textured plastic up top, a little bit of that rubber material, some kind of just more different textured plastic, faux carbon fiber, and then hard black plastic all down the center and everywhere. Now, one thing I like about this is that everywhere where it normally would have gloss black plastic, they opted for just a plain flat black plastic and I love this. I'd take this over the gloss black any day. It doesn't look more premium. It's not better. It's worse. It's worse, Subaru. But all around the center console area, just some gray and black shades of plastic. Even around the shift knob for your Lineatronic CVT, it's rubber and plastic. But plastic, plastic, plastic everywhere and that's what you get when you go with the base model. If you want to go up a little bit, pay for a premium or maybe a limited or sport or something like that, you'll be able to get a little bit better materials. But here in the base model, you're gonna get a lot of plastic. Now you do have automatic windows for driver and passenger, so that's pretty cool. Mirror controls here. You have no controls over here on the left side except for the brightness control for your gauge cluster. Speaking of the gauge cluster, past this rubber steering wheel, you're gonna have two analog gauges and a little 4.2 inch driver information cluster in the center there. You can see things like your gear, your odometer, your adaptive cruise control system, all of that on that, which is, you know, basically what you get on every other model. So it's not like it's less premium. It's basically the same. So, you know, I don't like that Subaru doesn't have a larger display option that has a digital display, but that's a complaint for a different video. But light and wiper controls and your standard stock placement here, you do not have paddle shifters on the back of this base model Crosstrek. You'll basically get that on every other Crosstrek, but you don't have it here. Instead of gloss black, you get this nice, just regular black plastic, which I much prefer for around your media controls on the left side and then all of your adaptive cruise control with lane centering and SI drive buttons are on the right side. Subaru badge in the center, a little bit more of that plastic black accent here. But again, just a solid rubber steering wheel here. No push to start, like I mentioned, you gotta put the key in still. And then over here, like I mentioned, you get two seven inch displays here. So it's basically all the same style of information that you get with the big 11.6 inch screen. It's just divided up differently. So you've got some settings on the top, some on the bottom, you've got a 
row of physical buttons in the center. Your climate control buttons are still on the side to change the temperature for driver and passenger. It's a dual zone climate control system, which is really nice to have on this kind of price point. You got your defoggers, you got physical controls for volume and tuning, physical controls for your hazards here, but then everything else is going to be on screen. And I am sad to report that it is just as laggy as the big 11.6 inch screen. So don't think you're getting an easy way out and getting a more fluid screen if you pay less money because you're not. But you do have some nice features built in. You've got radio, Bluetooth, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, X mode, VDC, auto vehicle hold, valet mode. You got a rear view camera that you can use. It looks bad, but you have it nonetheless. So you've still got all the same functionality, plus you have on-screen climate controls, so you can open up this menu, shuffle things around, change your fan speed, change your temperature with the physical controls. So still get a lot of great functionality. It's just the screen layout. It's kind of weird, at least compared to the rest of the lineup. Up top, you got a pretty basic rear view mirror. It's not even auto dimming, no compass, no home light garage door controls built in. Just a single piece of glass for this mirror. You do have some LED dome lights up top. Now here under the infotainment system, you've got a little pad. You could store your phone. Higher trims, you'll get a Qi-enabled wireless charging pad. You get one 3.5 millimeter jack and one USB-A port only. All of this area around the shift knob is very plasticky. You do have an electronic parking brake though. That's new for 2024. Linearatronic CVT shift knob here, two cup holders with these little pucks you can easily take out for cleaning. One 12 volt outlet, a little pocket past that. And then you do have a pretty small center console pocket here, but enough for some storage. And then a standard glove box over here. Now, you know it's bad when you read the window sticker and it does not say one thing about the seating surfaces. So these are just a black cloth seat. They do have a little bit of contrast stitching, but no real accents of any kind. They're not heated. They're not power adjustable, just completely manually adjustable seats in cloth. But saying that they're not the most uncomfortable seats I've ever sat in. I still think they're relatively bolstered, relatively comfortable. You get what you pay for with the seats for sure. But again, not terrible. That's pretty much it. Well, let's go ahead and hop in the second row. All right, now hop in here into the back seats of the Crosstrek base model. You're not gonna really have any amenities. You don't even have a map pocket on the back of this seat. You've got one on the passenger seat, no charging ports, no vents. This doesn't even fold down. You've got one cup holder on each door panel and that's it. You do have some handles, some hooks. Door materials are gonna be pretty pedestrian. You know, back here, you come to expect that. Even on higher trims, that's what we typically have. It's just a pretty low key back seat. It's pretty spacious. Luxurious and spacious. Like, look at this headroom. I got pretty good headroom back here. I'm 6'1". My head's not really even close. I have a couple inches of headroom there. You can tuck your feet up under the seat a little bit. You probably get three, four inches of rear leg room here. You know, the shoulder space and everything's pretty tight. Like, you're gonna be pretty close to the person sitting next to you. Three kids could fit back here, although this center hump here is pretty large, so just something to keep in mind. But three kids, I think you could fit back here for a short period of time. Two kids would be great. Two adults are gonna be comfortable for a reasonable amount of time. But again, it's a compact SUV, so not the biggest backseat area. And again, on the base model, not a whole lot of amenities. All right, let's take the 2024 Crosstrek base model for a test drive. This isn't really gonna have anything different than a normal Crosstrek that has the two liter engine. If you've watched videos of that, then you'll know what to expect. I'll just say first and foremost, after being a Subaru owner for three plus years and my wife owning a Crosstrek as well with this same engine with the 152 horsepower. She desperately wishes, and I did too when I had mine, that we had gotten 2.5 liter at least. I've said this before, this is foot to the floor. I'm crawling to 45 miles an hour. I've said this before, I would love, love if Subaru would give us the 2.4 liter turbo as an option on the Sport or the Wilderness or something like that on a higher trimmed Crosstrek because that would be so much stinking fun to have that turbo on something that's this size. I can't see them ever doing it, unfortunately. But when they do, if they do, you know I'll be all over it. I'll be the first one to make a video on it because it's all I talk about because I want it that badly. This is the two liter again for the base model. And like I just showed, I mean, I put the pedal to the floor. Do it again. You got that CVT lag, you know, it just goes really gingerly. But again, if you're buying a Crosstrek, especially the base model Crosstrek, you're probably not looking for a performance vehicle, right? You're looking for something to get you from A to B that has some modern technology, some modern comforts and conveniences, but is still really affordable. 
and that's what the Crosstrek is, especially this base model. So the zero to 60 is like almost 10 seconds. It's not impressive. It's not gonna blow you away. It's very slow. If you go up to some higher trim levels, you can get 3,500 pounds of towing capacity. It's capable in that regard. I don't think that's possible here on the 2.0 liter. I just don't think it's gonna happen for you. But we can go ahead and get some DB tests so you can know how this thing sounds. This does have an auto start stop engine. So I'll go ahead and disable that at idle so you can hear what it sounds like. So about 42, 43 dB at completely idle with no engine sound. And then with the engine running, about 49 or 50 dB, about what you'd expect, I guess. All right, here is the dB at city speeds. about 68 dB on average. But let's go ahead and just talk about some of the things that I like a lot about the base model Crosstrek here and then some things that aren't my favorite. But I'm gonna try and keep in mind that not only is it very difficult to find a base model because most dealerships just don't sell them so they don't keep them in stock, but you're probably not buying a base model unless you absolutely just want it, right? They're usually either like fleet vehicles or they're, you know, somebody wants the absolute, you know, most budget option. A lot of the features that I'm going to talk about are just what comes with having a base base model, but there's some really great features still. So first for three things that I like, I love that you have LED steering responsive headlights. That's a really premium feature. And to get that standard on the Crosstrek, even on the base model is awesome. In addition to that, having the advanced eyesight driver assist with front collision alert and lane keep assist and adaptive cruise control on something that's $27,000 and the lowest price on the you know entire trim list, that's awesome. And then finally for number three, I absolutely love the design of the Crosstrek. Even the base model, I think it's kind of unique because it doesn't have the roof rails. So it almost looks a little bit more sporty. It looks a lot more like its parent in the Impreza without those roof rails. So I think it's kind of a different look here on the base model, but still plenty aggressive and this black and red combo is killer. But now let's talk about three things that I don't like as much. Now again, this is the base model. So I'm not gonna talk about the materials. I think they're fine for the price you're paying. But a couple things I would really like to see on all trim levels, regardless of if it's the base or not. One is heated seats. I really think it's not too much to ask in 2024 to make heated seats standard on all trim levels, including the base model. Number two, I think they should just standardize the screen size. I understand why they're doing it. They want to differentiate, but basically every other trim except the very, very lowest trim is going to have the full 11.6 inch display. There's no way it's more cost effective to give you two screens or a split screen or whatever than just to give all all of the screens the same unit. Come on, Super. And the third thing I don't like is again, just the engine and the acceleration. I don't like this two liter. I think the standard engine option should be the 2.5 liter. I don't think you should be able to get the two liter at all. It's just too lethargic, too slow. It's not a fun driving experience. It's honestly hard to pass. Like it's hard to get up to speed and get around people on the road. So I think the standard option should be the 2.5 liter and then have the optional 2.4 liter turbo for some of those more high-end models and the performance models. But let's go ahead and get it here on the highway. We'll do a highway DB test. We'll do the adaptive cruise with the lane centering, see how that fares. But now that we're doing lane centering, let's get a highway DB test. Right around 70, 71 dB, but this is not a hands-free system, so it is telling me to keep my hands on the wheel here. But it is doing a really good job of keeping me in the center of the lane. It's keeping me really far away from the traffic in front of me. I can lower this gap down a little bit so we can speed up here. You can almost drive hands-free, but like you're gonna have to like grab the wheel every few seconds. They don't really have like a true hands-free system yet. And even if they did, it probably wouldn't be here on the base model, but this is kind of the best you're gonna get on a Subaru and it's on the lowest possible cross track. So that's super nice to have. And you can take over when lane centering is on and it'll disconnect and then you can get back in the lane and it'll restart, which is cool. But overall, kind of what are my thoughts on this base model Crosstrek? Most people aren't buying this, right? This is hard to come by. I don't even think you can order this directly from the manufacturer. I think you have to get it from a dealership that has ordered one. I just don't think they sell it. Some manufacturers don't, Subaru might, but typically speaking, you cannot order it straight from the manufacturer. This is something they reserve for basically keeping their starting at price. That's why base models exist. So they can advertise on their ads, get the all new 2024 Subaru Crosstrek starting at 26,990 or whatever the case may be. That's why they exist. Most dealerships do not have base models in stock and most of the time you won't see people driving around base models. But if you do want to get the base model, you want the cheapest possible Crosstrek option, it's all right. You get a lot of nice standard features, like I said, standard eyesight, standard LED steering responsive headlights, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. You get 20 cubic feet of cargo space up to 55 with those second row seats folded down. You get advanced adaptive cruise control with lane centering. There's a lot 
lot of nice standard features here on this base, base, base model. Obviously, we have the little options package, just, just a couple things, basically all weather mats for everything, right? Having that is nice too. It's hard for me to recommend buying the base model Crosstrek because for just a little bit more money, you can get some more really nice features. That larger screen, heated front seats, you know, leather seats, just some more premium materials, fog lights, things like that. So it's hard for me to recommend getting the cheapest possible option. But if you absolutely need to, or you just want to get your foot in the door with a new car, you could do worse. And you can still get some capability too. This thing still has 8.7 inches of ground clearance. I wouldn't recommend taking it off road, but you could. So thanks so much for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, drop a like for me. Let me know down in the comments. What do you think about this 2024 Subaru Crosstrek base model? You guys going to pick one up? Do you already have one? Are you interested in it? Do you want me to keep doing more of these cheapest, you know, versions of different Subaru vehicles? Let me know down in the comments. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button to be among the first to see every single new video the second I hit publish. We'll see you in the next one.